Hello and welcome to a new video on fast Fourier transforms, log returns, and optimization. I'm your host, Trader Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. Here I have a back test uh, that I found via some optimization. So you can see on this chart right here, these are the uh, optimized uh, values. So each dot uh, represents uh, a back test. And, you know, on this uh, axis, you have sharp ratio. So, you know, as you can see, the sharp ratio is definitely broken 100, but we definitely have, you know, sharp ratio is pretty low. Okay. So if we go um, back here to this back test, you can see that this particular back test has a sharp ratio of 120.08. And that's really pretty decent, um, you know, given the fact that it's obviously over optimized and everything like that, that's going to come down a bit. Uh, the expected payoff is 5.04, not bad. Uh, we have some long trades, one, 75%, short trades, one, 46.51%, um, profit factor, 2.51, uh, recovery factor, 7.79. I mean, all just really fun metrics, okay? So I really like this. We, we had 91 trades, uh, given the fact that there is like 250 two days of trading, I think, something like that. I mean, uh, it's pretty nice. Okay, so this is, this is a pretty good deal. We can go down here and we can actually see, um, you know, on Monday, hey, things were really good. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, we can see by month. So obviously November and December, you know, not, not the best, uh, you know, there. So we can look at the um, MFE and MAE, okay? And as you can see, our average holding time is only two minutes. And that's because if we go to the inputs, which I will explain, uh, we're only doing this on a two minute time frame. okay? So the depth of the fast Fourier transform is only 2.2. So what does that mean? So uh, if it's two, that means we only take the first half of the values of the fast Fourier transform uh, frequencies. So this is about 2.2, right? Um, the threshold is 15, so in other words, it's telling you that uh, it's going to move a certain amount, right? Uh, so it has to break a certain threshold. I mean, if it, if it tells you it's only going to move a little bit, you probably don't want to take it, so uh, at least I don't want to take it. Okay, so you have H lower, um, H higher. Uh, H lower and H higher, uh, this is uh, essentially uh, the Hurst values that are being filtered for. Um, so if the Hurst is uh, lower than 0.45 and the Hurst is greater than 0.6, then it will take a trade, okay? And these are the magic numbers, the you know, stop loss, the take profit. Um, in this case, we said not Brownian. So if we were to you know, select a different one, we can make this Brownian, uh, we can make this between, we could only make it revert, we can only make it trending, that kind of stuff. And our start hour and our end hour. So it's a uh, 10 to 15 hour here. Okay. So uh, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one. This was really, really cool. So you can actually see <clears throat> the, uh, the results here. I'll just scroll them down. You can see that, I mean, we have some pretty, I mean, when these are a darker color, that means they're a stronger result. So, I mean, even if you didn't like that one, this one's 120 and it still has a, a, a drawdown of 0 0.06. There's so many to choose from here. Uh, maybe a higher time frame would probably be a bit better um, statistically. One minute, two minute, you know, that's, you know, interesting. Um, so if we, we could filter by minute and, and pick the one we like there with the highest sharp ratio. Tons of possibilities. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's just all over the place and it's pretty nicely distributed. So I'm gonna go over some of the code, okay? So let me pull that up. All right. So here we have uh, this fast Fourier transform .mqh. I wrote this, this is a fast Fourier transform uh, library that I wrote some time ago. It's written in Tukey and Cooley algorithm. It's pretty cool. So we have position info, uh, trade, and uh, we want to specify what kind of noise that we were looking for, trending, reverting, Brownian, not Brownian. Um, you know, these are all the inputs that we already went over. And what we're going to do is look at the price, you know, I price. Um, this is the open and the close added together divided by two. And what we can do is we can more or less calculate uh, the Hurst values uh, using least squares algorithm and these like uh, finite sums or whatever. Okay, 
So once we get the Hearst value, uh, we're, in, we're in a good deal. So this is um, the trade tracker. I, I've always used this, so you, know, you can kind of see if anything's open or not. Um, it's going to basically calculate how long the position is open, right? So if we're using our <clears throat> current time frame, it, it was, it's two minutes, so it's only gonna let it be open for two minutes because if you think about it, the return, we're predicting a return, it's only good for the next you know time frame, like the next uh, iteration, right? Okay, so here we have our date time, right? We're going to uh, you know filter out our time. It's gonna be after four seconds. Uh, you know, day of the week is one, two, three, four. That's the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, we have our start hour, end hour, okay? And what we're going to do is calculate our Hearst two to the power of seven, okay? That's 128 values. And we're going to do um, our returns, 128 returns. Now, I did write uh, another class, um, or data type, whatever you want to call it, called complex, um, my own version of it, uh, because I think it was kind of necessary to do so. Um, so you, what we're going to do is we're going to do the, the log returns, right? The log returns um, for the last 120 values. and you can see uh, that we have to instantiate this into FFT values. This is kind of like a wrapper uh, for these values, so the fast Fourier transform can really, you know, sink its teeth into it. Uh, we do, you know, instantiate the class FFT fast Fourier transform, and um, what we're going to do is fast Fourier transform the returns, and we basically get some, you know, uh, transformed returns. I wrote it this way because you know it's more English, uh, but this is also considered like the frequency, right? And so what we need to do is we need to loop through these things and uh, get the next uh, you know value in in the in the period, right? So we have our frequencies. We can reconstruct our function, but we only want to use a certain number of uh, our values. We don't want to use necessarily all of them. <clears throat> So we have um, int transformed uh, returns or the frequencies dot size divided by depth, and then we can you know it's like a double, and then we convert it to an int. So if you can think about it, like all the returns are you know like ordered as such, and you only want to take a certain cutoff of them, uh, very much like what everybody else does. So yeah, um, and we're going to you know iterate this over and over and over again. We're going to get the uh, the pred and the real values. Um, and then this is the cool part, right? This is maybe the part that, uh, you know, might be really interesting. Um, since we're doing it on the returns, we have the previous uh, price and we have uh, the predicted return. We can solve for the predicted price. Okay, so here's the um, current price that we have. Like this is the current close, whatever. And then we do e to the uh, you know um, return right here, and that's going to give us our pred price. And if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense because if you have the return equals logarithm, you know what the current price divided by the prev price, you know you can very easily solve that equation. Okay, and then here's the uh, Hurst filtration. That's really really cool. And then just you know stereotypical uh, you know requests and you know transaction stuff okay so it says dx is greater than threshold so it, in other words it's like saying hey look um, in order for this to actually do a buy or a sell um, the dx uh, has to be pretty high right so this uh, is the absolute difference um, between the pred price and the current price so in other words it's got to predict past a certain threshold we're not just going to take any prediction so I really enjoy this, uh, you know, this this attempt. I think this is pretty cool. There's uh, probably lots more I could do with this, but uh, the one thing that I will say that I really do like is that it is working on, you know, some other time frames. There are some other options. So if I um, go here, go all the way up. <clears throat> I mean, clearly that some of the best results are on the one minute, but if I go uh, maybe to the four or five minute. Um, two minute, three minute, whatever. Let's see if we can go down to, we have three, four, five, okay. 
<clears throat> I mean, there are still some good sharp ratios around here uh, at the five minute. So, I mean, you'd have to hunt for them. So here's here's a 19.07. So it, it's really, uh, I think, good. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.